Hello everyone, this is Ari Does Things, and I'm Ari, and so I be doing things. So today, I decided that what I wanted to do was start posting alternative crochet content on YouTube. Because guess the fuck what? So many people are not doing that. Um, I know there's a alt crochet community out there because I'm in several different Facebook groups about it, but people are not taking full advantage of the things that they're making and making YouTube videos about them. So here I am to solve all of your alt crochet worries. So starting with this video that you're watching about everything that I have crocheted basically ever. Um, sli uh, slightly off by a couple of items because I either can't find them or they are just from so long ago that it just doesn't make sense to include them because I'll tell you my crochet story. I started crocheting back in fourth grade and the most that I was ever able to crochet back in fourth grade was a single line of crochet, like the first line. I've got that down pat since then. Um, I had figured it out, but I could not for the life of me, maybe it was the yarn I was using, but I could not for the life of me figure out how to go back on the chain and actually put into the right stitch where I was supposed to like go with the hook to like pull the yarn through and like stitch the rest of the stitches, single crochet stitches. I could not for the life of me figure it out. So I gave it up and didn't think about it or do anything with it until literally this past December. So December of 2022, after I had um, finished up my semester uh, that time, I was like, Actually, I'll tell you the full story. I um, was hand knitting things like blankets and hats and scarves and cardigans even for a little while before I bought this one particular yarn that I wanted to hand knit with. I wanted to hand knit myself a pillow and I did. This is actually the pillow in question and the yarn in question. Isn't it beautiful? It matches my branding perfectly and it's everything I could have ever hoped for because it's so soft and cuddly. But if you, in case you can't notice, uh, these stitches are like super revealing of the inside um, stuffing. So... I realized that I was definitely not going to be able to hand knit like things like hats and scarves and pillows and stuff in any way that was like high enough quality that I would feel comfortable trying to sell it because that's the thing. Some people criticize me for like, oh, you just started doing this. You need to practice before you start selling. And it's like, if my practice looks like the finished product of somebody else's and feels the same and works the same and isn't like losing ends everywhere. Like as long as it's holding up, I feel like I should be able to sell that, you know, like definitely not at as high of a price as something that I worked longer on or put more time and effort into the design uh, over time, like remaking the design, but definitely like it's worth something. It's worth something. So definitely worth actually trying to sell these things but like this pillow in particular not only was it made for me so I don't want to sell it because it's mine but I just wouldn't feel comfortable like look at the edge you can see all the stuffing in there I just wouldn't feel comfortable with that level of quality for the amount of time that it took to make the pillow I would have to charge like 40 45 dollars and this is just not not the quality. So I've used other silky yarns before for these pillows and I um, I had them turn out way better so I'm comfortable with selling those for 45 a piece but like I my normal hand knit pillows with just the extra bulky chunky yarn I just sell those for 35 because I can typically get a skein at full price for like $13 and some change so I feel like it only takes me about 
an hour or so, like less than two hours to actually make it. And it's not that difficult. So I feel comfortable, especially when I get the yarn on sale with uh, selling it at the $35 price point. So anyway, this was the yarn that I um, was working with. And I had so much left over after this that I was like, what am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with this yarn? And so I remembered that I actually owned at least one or two crochet hooks. And I was like, well, maybe that'll be the perfect like size for this yarn. I think it will be. And it was. And so it was after that that I decided to look up some beginner tutorials for crochet on YouTube. And one of the ones that I kept coming back to was the cat eared beanie. So I made one. I um, started it way too big, so this was supposed to be the bottom actually, but it was way too big to actually fit over my head properly, so I went back and started decreasing. I learned how to decrease on this project. So I started decreasing a little bit at the sides until it actually fits snugly over my head. And now it looks like one of the Castle Crashers bats that's like eating my brains out of my head or something but I think he's super cute especially since I added on these little eyeballs with the the buttons and like you can unbutton this and have just like a really slouchy beanie but um I like him the way that he is I've kept him like this since I made him so this was the very first actual crochet project that I ever did like you can see the back and how that looks. I think it looks really great. And so what was my next thing that I did? I think the very next thing that I did, because I still had more of this yarn, was to make this top. And if I can remember the tutorials that I followed for these, like you can literally just YouTube cat ear beanie tutorial and it'll come up with so many different tutorials. And like you can literally look up so many different top tutorials. So like it's the same basic idea for like making the cups. And then with this one in particular, there was like a specific stitch I was supposed to be doing at the bottom, but I do not remember. I, I know I did it wrong. So if you were to follow this exact tutorial with this exact yarn, you probably still wouldn't make it exactly the way that I made this because I just made it wrong. But I'll insert a video clip here of me actually wearing this set together so that you can see it on because it actually looks really good on. So hopefully my editing skills will be good enough that that's going to be up on screen now and uh, it'll actually look good and my voice won't clip in weird ways. So moving on from that, what was the next thing that I did? I feel like the next thing that I did was uh, another cat ear beanie. So I actually made this one out of black yarn and I can't I can't for the life of me remember I made some arm like not arm warmers but fingerless gloves out of that same yarn from before I think before I even made this I had made those and I don't know where they are but if I have any pictures of them or videos or anything I'll insert that here or if I find them I'll insert that but after that, I had bought this black yarn in order to make my partner a pair of the fingerless gloves. And I did that. I actually only have one of the ones that, I don't think this was one of the ones that he wanted to keep, but he wanted them just to where you can still see the watch. And this one, I think, is the one that I made extra um, when I was just practicing because he actually has a set that matches pretty well that I think looks a little bit better than this. But I still had, after making that, a decent amount of the black yarn left because I would just buy like two or three skeins of yarn so that I would have plenty. 
And so that's where this cat eared beanie came from. I've thought about adding on like white eyes, white buttons for eyes, um, but I haven't gotten around to doing that yet. So um, after that, I think that's when I did my first hand or around that time is when I did my first hand crochet mushroom. Oh, which I didn't start at the very beginning, but I'll insert pictures at least of the hand crochet mushroom bag that I made first here. It's on my Instagram and everywhere, like I've shared it different places. But um, so I, I was doing that also, but here, here is uh, one of the hand crochet. I started hand crocheting before I actually started crocheting with a hook. So I would make like these pet beds that they're, I think it's Be Cozy is the tutorial for the pet beds. So I've made several of these out of just a single skein of chunky yarn for like small size pets. Um, I haven't had a lot of interest in them yet, which is why I haven't made like big size pet beds because it's just a bigger investment. Like I could do it, but it's just more yarn and more work on my end uh, without knowing that it's gonna sell. So I also made, I started trying to make plushies at that point because I hadn't tried it yet and they're really big, like plushies are a really big thing. So I tried my hand at making a couple of plushies. I actually freehanded this guy um, because I had been making the mushroom bags or I had made the mushroom bag by hand so I kind of understood the magic circle. So I made this little water pipe guy with little eyeballs and it was at that point I think that I went ahead or I might have actually made the mushroom bucket hats first but at some point in time I had made this axolotl and as you can see, I used the same black yarn that I had left over as um, the accents, but he still needs eyeballs, but I think he turned out pretty good. I don't know if I would sell him ever just because the, it, in hindsight, the yarn is kind of weird for like skin tone of this creature. Uh, I do like it paired with the black. But I don't know. I just, he's just, if somebody really has fallen in love with him and you've pack bonded with him, get in touch with me because I will sell him to you after he has eyes. But um, yeah, that's, it was a, a an experiment and I didn't really like making it. So I probably won't be making very many plushies, like maybe just lava lamps and like the water pipes and stuff if I do. But um, let's see what else. I also, at some point in time, around that same time, I had got this Walmart yarn. It's like home, hometown yarn or something. And I made a mushroom bucket hat. Isn't it super cute? I looked up, um, there was two tutorials that I followed that hopefully I'll be able to link in the description. Uh, one of them was the plain bucket hat tutorial, and then the second one just went over how to modify that tutorial to make it the mushroom instead. So I used the combination of those two tutorials, but because this yarn was a higher size, I had to actually like, I, I didn't use as many rows for the base of the hat up here as I did, as they did in the tutorial, and then it wasn't as many rows this way. So I kind of just had to like put it on my head and see where it fit. And then I have this little tie here that I've since made better ties, but I have the tie so that like, if you need to tighten it up because of the wind or something, you can do that. But um, I'm pretty sure these circles I got from the mushroom bucket hat tutorial as well. But one thing that I did that I can insert pictures of here is I actually, around, when it got close to Valentine's Day, I decided to look up a tutorial for how to make hearts. 
And so I made little hearts instead to put on the mushroom bucket hat. So I have a heart themed mushroom bucket hat and the regular themed bucket hat, mushroom themed bucket hat. And then I started making another one and I made a few of the circles for it, but I don't have all the circles done and I don't have them sewn on. So I can show you what it looks like before you sew on the circles also, if I can find it. Yeah, there it is. See, so it's just basically a plain bucket hat, but as you can see, it's like without the tie, it's very like, whoo. <laughs> so, and I don't think that making it smaller up here would have made a difference for that. So that's why I like including the ties. But in the, the hearts mushroom bucket hat, I put a white tie instead of a red tie. And then here's one of the circles that's going to be actually going on here. So I just need to take this end and sew this on here in order for that to be done. But it was at some point around then that I started making these faux bolero sleeves. So this, I believe, is the first faux bolero sleeves that I actually made because I think I think it is because of this yarn. I had plenty of this yarn left over and so I'm pretty sure this is the first one that I made. But I think I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit because I think before I started making sleeves, before I started making sleeves, I actually made this gigantic market bag. I followed a market bag tutorial up until a certain point, um, but really I shouldn't have been following the tutorial so closely because if you look at the bottom, you can't really tell from here, but it's got like a bump on the very center because I was not increasing enough the way that I should have been. Something sticking through this bag. Anyway, but, um, oh, and here's, here's an example of a hand knitted hat that I've done before. So these are really cool. I like them, especially this color. This yarn is discontinued now. It's absinthe from loops and threads. It was like chunky boho or something. And my friend gave me like four skeins of it. So I still have one skein left over and I used one to make this and I used two to make a pillow. But anyway, that's beside the point. The point is that I did follow the market bag tutorial for the basic shape of it and then um, to kind of do the straps. But then I had to take and on the straps that I made, they weren't big enough. So I had to add a whole second row of double crochet on the other side so that it distributes the weight better and it's not just going to snap. Um, so yeah, I, I used the basic tutorial that I'll hopefully link in the description to do most of this, but there was a certain point in here where you were supposed to put like a mesh stitch and obviously I didn't do that. I just did double crochet. This bag was like one of the most annoying projects because it was literally just row after row after row after row of double crochet and I don't even know how many stitches are in this bag all the way around. Like it's got to be over 200 stitches. It's crazy. Like, I'm, I'm fucking crazy. Like, I'm insane for doing the projects that I do and when I did them. Because I still, I did that before I did the sleeves and probably before I even did the bucket hats, honestly. But so that was another project of mine. And then let's see. Here's another pair of sleeves that I did some faux boleros. And I'll be hopefully putting in footage or pictures of me actually wearing these in the over the thing but I like this one a lot it actually has if I can find it yes it has one of these bandanas that you can either wear like this or like around your waist you could almost wear this as a skirt 
if I had just made a second panel to it, but um, it's really nice to, if I could even remember how to put it on properly, it's really nice to just have on over your hair or to have your hair tucked back beneath it. So I'll hopefully have pictures of me wearing both of them together. And if I don't, I'll take pictures or take a little video and I'll put that in here because they look really good together. I really love this yarn. It's like cloudy with a twist. Um, it's like Yarn Bee, I think, from Hobby Lobby. And it's it's like seven or eight dollars a skein, but it did only take me... I want to say two skeins to do this. I want to say that that's accurate, but I don't 100% remember. I have to remake this at some point in time because this is mine. I've, <laughs> I've worn it out and got it dirty and it's mine. So <laughs> yeah, there's that. Oh yes, let's see. So at some point in time or another during all of this, I can't really keep it straight in my brain when I made certain things because I've just been making so many things, oh my god, and my brain doesn't keep time the way that it should. But I made this top, this spider boob top going off of the Passionate Kelsey um, tutorial. So that's showing you how to decrease and how to do the spider web itself. And then like she also, I think she does like the whole, yeah, she does how to do the whole boob part. And then um, the ties were just really basic. I just, I used two different yarns on this because this was an older bamboo yarn that I had from like one of my mom's friends from back when I was in fourth grade. She had given it to me. And so I just had it stashed in my yarn stash that I had kept throughout the years anyway, even though I wasn't crocheting. And then once I got back into the hand knitting, I just went yarn crazy. And um, ever since have just been like bonkers about yarn. But I made this top and you'll, I'll put a thing of me like wearing it um, over the that's, you should know by now. You should know by now to see it coming. But I also made a bandana head covering that could almost be a skirt out of this. But the reason it's not an actual skirt is because I actually ran out of the bamboo yarn when I got to the end of this, the little mesh at the end there. That was like the very tail end of the yarn. I think I actually had just barely, like I had a tail maybe this big left on the yarn um, when I finished. So <laughs> I won that game of yarn chicken. Did that shit. Would not have been able to if I hadn't had the foresight to add this extra yarn. Oh, but also this particular yarn I had bought I had bought that in order to do something with it because I loved the color and I was already buying this other color, these other colors for this project, which was supposed to fit me. I actually, this was probably the first piece that I fully, um, I wrote a pattern for this. It's not actually digitally written yet. It's still in my notebook. It's not the best pattern because especially if you're using the super chunky yarn I don't know how to make this pattern smaller in this yarn uh I have no idea this is just the smallest that I could think to do it and the size that it turned out but then I did a combination of both yarns for the sleeves and I've kind of just got them like tied on there to where you can adjust them if you need to. And then I did the same thing for the corset back closure. So I think I have at least one picture of me with this actually on and you can see that it like engulfs me. Like you can see from just here, like it engulfs me. So I don't know how to make it smaller, but this is like probably a large, extra large, maybe 
and because of the corset back it might even fight it fit whew, might even fit an xxl it depends on your boobage size so i can take measurements of this if you're interested but i only ever made it once because i realized that even though i was going for a small size it was not a small size. Maybe if I had used a smaller hook size or just a thinner yarn, because this is a very chunky blanket yarn. And so this would be something that you could like, yeah, you, you could wear it in the winter probably with just a small shawl over it and be super warm. But I was thinking about making like the bell sleeves with the mesh, like uh, the faux boleros with this but then I ran out of yarn is what happened. I had just barely enough yarn to actually finish the ties and stuff. So that didn't ever happen but let me show you another bucket or a couple of bucket hats that I made. I started making things for Valentine's Day like I said before and part of that was trying to make a heart bucket hat which I did I did. It, it's not like the worst. It's got a little tie here. It's got a little tie here that you can kind of tuck up behind there. But I did like a white stripe so that it matches the heart there. So that's what this looks like. And then I'll show you this other bucket hat, my cheese bucket hat. cheese bucket hat based off of the mushroom design except it's just a different color and did I bring yes I brought okay so I think I can't remember if I made the cheese hat first or second to this rainbow hat but I also made a rainbow slash sunflower bucket hat and this actually matches what I have on, so I might leave it on as long as I don't have other things to show you. Okay, and so in addition to those other faux bolero sleeves that I made, I decided to make one out of this beautiful yarn bee, again, from Hobby Lobby yarn. And I got to the point where I had the sleeve a certain length, and I think I either ran out of the first skein that I had bought and I had only bought two skeins or some something like that happened to where I realized that I couldn't do full length sleeves without buying more yarn. So I just made this one like a little definitely like spring type summer type top. So it's like not super overwhelming with the heat of the sleeves going all the way down. Um, so it's really nice. I've worn it several times. If nobody wants to buy it, I'm so happy to keep it because it's so great. Um, if somebody does want to buy it, I'll hand wash it before I send it off to you because I have worn it before. But at some point during all of that, you'll notice if I could even find it. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, you'll notice that these are the same yarn colors in these granny squares that I tried to make with mushrooms as the mushroom that I hand crocheted and then the top, uh, the spider boob top that I made. This is the same yarn from that. And then I had had this white left over from the University of Miami tank top that I did. That was the only color that I actually had yarn left over. So I tried making granny squares and I think, I think if I were just using a smaller yarn, it would work really well. Or even if I were like making a cardigan out of these, like that would, I would only need like three to make the cardigan length. Like I could, I could do something with this, but the yarn's expensive and I'm getting more into different alt crochet stuff now. So at some point in time, 
I think I still hand crocheted both of these, but I made more little mushrooms. More little mushrooms. So this one, I actually didn't follow the pattern properly. I'll try and link that below too. But I didn't follow the pattern properly, so I can barely get my hand in there. So this would be a good one for like especially if you had a little liner bag that you wanted to put in there you could like like a drawstring bag you could like put all your stuff in the drawstring and then stuff it down in here like it might fit like a vape or like a pack of cigarettes or like a very small like credit cards only wallet or something and then your pens or crochet hooks even if you have a longer tube uh tube of crochet hooks you could probably fit those in there but this was just because I was freehanding it off of the pattern and like not paying the most attention so it turned out a little wonky as you can see it's still got ends poking out so I don't know if that one's ever gonna sell or anything maybe it will maybe it'll sell to like a young child who can use it for their rock bag collection I don't know Anyway, so I made this other one out of the blue and I actually made it more like structural instead of just having it like a dome. I made it like, you can see, like it's got a wall to it and a top, like a flat top. But I actually did follow the tutorial properly for this one. So you can actually fit a decent size wallet and like pretty much all of your other stuff in there. And like I said, these don't have liner bags on them. I would be totally willing to sew in a liner bag for an extra fee uh, if you want to buy this, but you want a liner bag in it and you don't just want to buy your own. So that's, that's also doable. But um, yeah, so cool little mushroom pouch it uh I followed I actually followed the tutorial for like a small one but just with this super chunky yarn and it translated really well really really well so after that at some point in time like I said I'd had this nice like white cream color left over from the University of Miami uh tank top so I made this granny square bag that hopefully I can put the, the, um, I'll put pictures of me wearing it up and, uh, I will also have the tutorial linked, but it has a drawstring of this beautiful juniper, I think is the colorway of the yarn bee, super snuggly soft yarn. That's not what it's called, super snuggly soft, but that's what it is. So I did the bottom in that and then it took almost the two whole skeins I think or one whole skein I forget how many I had but however many I had it took either one or two whole skeins of the yarn to make the bottom and the tie so I was only able to do that and then actually no I didn't have I lied this is a different yarn from the white that was on the University of Miami uh, tank top because this one is more of a cream color so I had actually bought this special and separate for this particular bag after I had got this far I was just looking for a match for this yarn and I think I did a really good job of matching colors there so for Valentine's Day I started making some different things one of which is this hearts boob mesh bottomed corset back top so i thought that was really cool it might work better for someone with a little bit boobs than me, bigger boobs than me because i feel like mine is just like my nipples gonna slip out or something but if you had more like meat there it would like your nipple would stay over here <laughs> Um, but I'll hopefully have a picture of me with that on or some kind of video going up over the thing right now. And after that, at some point, is when I started making these heart bags. I'll definitely link the tutorial for that, but I will warn you, they use a very specific type of yarn. 
So especially if you're using a weight for acrylic, you'll have to adapt the pattern so that you don't get these wavy bits because I was following the pattern more closely for this one. Um, so I got a bunch of wavy bits on the hearts. Um, but I, I followed the tutorial for the straps and everything and how to, I basically followed the tutorial for how to make the side panel, but I kind of did my own thing there also. And in addition to that, in addition to that, I made it a second time. So this one turned out way flatter, way better, and I haven't been using it, so it's still not pilling very well or very much. Um, you don't you don't want it pilling if you can help it, but um, acrylic yarn does that. So it's still in very nice condition because um, I haven't used it because I've been using the other one. But it fits. I can tell you as someone who carries a bunch of stuff, like just look, just look at everything that I have in this. I have my wallet, I have my business card holder, I have a shit ton of receipts, I have my vape charger, I have a bottle of Midol, I have an almost empty pack of cigarettes and lighter, I carry my vape in here, I carry my fingerless gloves. You can carry a lot in this little bag, like it's definitely worth it. And then in addition to that, back when I was making little stuffies, I had this beautiful blue yarn and I was like blue raspberries. So I made one tiny blue raspberry stuffy and one bigger blue raspberry stuffy and I still haven't added eyes to either of them. So fun fun, but when I was still all crazy making the sleeves, the faux boleros, I had had this epiphany to turn it into an alt crochet project. So I had some chains left over from making my trash earrings, which I'll insert a picture that you can see them better right now. Um, but I had some chains and uh, jump rings left over. So you can see those there. I've got them on the shoulders and then underneath the arms, and then in several places on the arms, I've got little distressed, distressed areas where it's just chains. And then I made the ends asymmetrical and have these little dangly tassels. And then I made the front asymmetrical as well, where it has this little taper. So these were really fun to make and they're one of my favorite things to actually wear with things. I love them. The dangly bits kind of do get in the way, but this is more like festival or like very specific like club type. You, you, it's like you wear it out once and then you like hand wash it and only wear it like once a year, once or twice a year or something. I wear it more than that, but I don't even know if I can find this colorway of this yarn anymore because it, this was a yarn that I bought years ago to make one of those pom-pom rugs and I realized that I was never going to finish the pom-pom rug because it was for a friend of mine who actually passed after um, we were chatting about me completing it um, pretty soon and so then I just never completed it so I just had yarn left over and I made this beautiful thing and so I'll have pictures of me wearing this with this other top that I'm about to show you. So this one is actually a work in progress, um, but it's one of the more recent things that I've made. It's like a clouds type teal top, and then it has these X's on there and then I'll insert a picture of the sketch of it too because I want to make bottoms for it and I want to make a spider web out of chains for the belly part so I'll insert that picture of the sketch now so that you can see my my plans I want to get like copper like pennies that have just been oxidized to where they're green for the little dangly bits off of the spider web and off of the short the uh, the bottoms that I want to make because I don't know I thought about making a skirt but I'm gonna make plenty of other skirts for other projects so there's that but anyway 
In addition to all of that, I started making for my senior exhibition a kind of doily table shawl that was in a different color when I initially made it and then I just dyed it this aquamarine color. So as you can see, I did a bunch of different stitches. I actually freehanded this whole thing. It's mostly just double and treble crochet and skipping little bits. And then I did peacocks and mini peacocks towards the end. And then I figured out how to do these dangly bits um, by myself. So yeah, really cool doily thing. And then last but not least, oh no, not last but not least, I have a whole other outfit I haven't showed you yet. But for my senior exhibition, I had to put a border on the screen print and my friend was like looking at me trying to sew a border on and was like, why don't you just crochet it? Can't you just crochet it? And I was like, when I planned this project, I didn't crochet. I didn't know I was going to be crocheting. That's a great idea. So I have, I'll have a better picture of this, but it's my Two of Bounties tarot card on iridescent fabric, screen printed directly on iridescent fabric by hand. And then I hand stitched the border here. And then I crocheted this scalloped peacock border and then the, the little um, hanger for it as well. But wait, there's more. I also, during my um, first solo exhibition this year, uh, crocheted a thing that ended up being part of my senior exhibition, this Plarn octopus with little suckers. So I basically just did a bulbous form and then went in a little bit at the end and actually like cinched it up. And then I just crocheted the legs off of his body. And then I also crocheted little eyeball sockets so that I can put um, lids, like plastic cup or plastic bottle lids in here for his eyes. I didn't want to lose them, so I don't have them in there right now. But in addition to that, there's another thing. I made another version of the spider boob top, but I... I think I followed the tutorial again for the cups part, but from there on I winged it and you'll you'll see why. You'll you'll see why it's winged. But it's a little bit big on me. So I'll insert pictures of me wearing the whole outfit in just a minute. But I uh, was so inspired by this top and this yarn, and I had bought two of the mandala cakes in this yarn color. And I had bought a one skein of this sparkly black. And so I was so inspired by this that I decided to completely freehand one of my biggest projects ever, this spiderweb cutout skirt. So it has spiderweb hip cutouts and I had to take and every time that I would like come to an end of a row here, I would have to cut the yarn and then reattach it on the other side and then keep going so that the color stripes would be the same on either side. So, and I also put belt loops in the top. I, I left little belt loops in there. I had a bunch of stitch markers in this thing all the way, like all on all of these different places. And so from there, I decided that I wanted to make accessories for it in the spider web kind of vein with the remainder of the yarn. So I have this, um, this thing that you'll see, you see the outfit all together with all the pictures. And then it was at that point that I finally was like, okay, I'm going to make a crochet scrunchie. So I did to match. So now I'm also working on a shawl for it with the remainder of the yarn. And I have plenty of other stuff in the works, including this amazing top that I thought I had finished yesterday. But it turns out, 
as you'll see from the photos that this uh edge is like really it, it like pops your your boobs pop out <laughs> your your boobs pop out in this top so i've got this really beautiful mesh and then i'll insert a picture of the whole like concept sketch of like the uh top and the skirt that i want to do but uh i think i'm going to crochet today a like v that comes out like this from these two points and comes together into one single strap so that you can strap it around your chest area as well so that your boobs don't pop out but this is one of the newer alter alternative crochet projects that i've been working on with the uh it's more like festival type clothing with the mesh and the chains and um I feel like if this were black, it would be very alt themed um, because it's pink. It's kind of more pastel goth type vibes. But anyway, so this is the very most recent thing that I've been working on and I'm going to finish working on it today. And as you have seen throughout the video, I have hopefully been able to put in uh, examples of me wearing these things, but that is... <laughs> This is such a long video, like I am recording this and as I'm recording this before I chop it down, it's like 47 minutes long. So we'll see how much I can cut out of that, but this is probably going to be a long ass video and I am sorry for that, but hopefully you've enjoyed all of these different things that I've crocheted within the past four months. It's been four months. And I've been in college working on my graduating, like my last semester before graduation. So my life has been crazy. I would have made so many more things if I just had the time and the money and the energy to just sit down and do it. But it is really looking at this pile of stuff on the floor. It is a crazy amount that I have put together. <laughs> and if you're wondering, I don't want to leave out my friend. If you're wondering, I did not make this top or this top. It's actually very beautiful though. So I would definitely recommend um, you checking out not only my links, but Left Hook Crochet at lefthookcrochet.com. I'm not sure if there's an Instagram, but my wonderful, wonderful new friend that I made while uh, vending had a uh, took me up on an art trade. So we traded a couple of items and I was able to get the two items that I 100% loved out of her booth. They're great and they're great quality. And I just, I don't wear them all the time, but I've worn them several, several times since I got them and would definitely recommend because she makes all kinds of stuffies and little, she makes all kinds of stuff. So go check her out. Go check out my links. Follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm hopefully going to get my website, realalternatives.art, up and running pretty soon to where I can take orders. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to try to get this video edited together today and posted just as soon as I can because, man, do we need more alternative crochet content. So I'm going to be working on that. So if you're interested in more alt crochet content or ukulele cover videos or even my own original ukulele stuff, I think those and the Ari Talks videos are going to be the main content on this YouTube channel from here on out. So subscribe. You don't even have to hit the like bell button notification. Just check up on my channel every once in a while and watch what you want and don't watch what you don't. But I'm, this is Ari Does Things, and I'm Ari, and I be doing things. So thank you so much for watching today. Thank you if you stayed tuned until the end. I appreciate you. You are wonderful. And you stay golden and be good. And don't do anything I wouldn't do. Until next time, bye!